Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome back to The Mixer, the segment on this channel where I give you guys all sorts of detailed information about different kinds of stuff revolving around life, humanity. I might talk about nature or science or geography or sports, you know, this and that, animals, whatnot, you know, and uh, for the second video in a row, I'm wearing a white shirt. It's not the same though, you know, it's not the same jersey because I was wearing a sports jersey in the last one and today I'm wearing a white one, you know, so I'm obviously not recording recording them in the same day, but I just wanted to kind of, uh, I don't know, it, it's very weird because I don't usually enjoy recording videos like in the same, uh, with the same shirt Molt, like like consecutively, but I don't know. It's just this dumb thing that I have. But anyway, but I'm actually really, uh, I really wanted to talk about today's topic, you know, because I did do a video on it years ago, wearing the same shirt. That's why I'm I'm remaking it now, you know. But uh, my videos have been kind of evolving lately, you know, to include more information and better editing. So I wanted to give you guys kind of like a a, a reboot of that, you know. And I'm going to be talking about something today that I don't even think could be considered debunking a myth because I'm pretty sure at this point everybody knows about this or at the very least you should you know I'm going to be talking about that what was once a widespread rumor you know that human beings use only 10% of our brains you know if you still don't know that this is not true well I'm glad you came to this video because I'm going to be the one responsible for for uh, teaching you something new today you know that science has never really been able to accurately predict you know because it's really strange how it happens because uh, it's actually said that the the, the a possible uh, origin for this myth was way back in 1907, you know, when there was this uh, journal called Science, you know, and then uh, William James, who was a psychologist and author, he actually published, you know, this thing uh, regarding, you know, how human how humans use different parts of their brains for, you know, mental resources and this and that. So now he did not specify a percentage, but there was an argument made that we did not use our entire portion of the brain at any any point you know the medulla obligata which is a scientific term for the, the human brain you know and then way later in 1936 there was a book written by Dale Carnegie 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 I don't know how to say that person's name but I'm pretty sure it probably showed up on screen anyway you know so now the book was called How to Win Friends and Influence People, you know, and there in that book, there was a myth that was described as something that the, the author's college professor used to say, that we would only use 10% of our brains at any given moment, you know, which maybe back in the day made sense, but today it's actually laughable, you know. It is really laughable just how this works because it is, it, it, there, there, are, uh, there are kind of like uh, thoughts about how where this myth originated, you know, but there is a belief among scientists today that neurons make up about 10% of our brain cells, you know, so I mean, that maybe could have contributed to the myth of the 10%. People just got it, you know, mixed up and thought it was the wrong information, you know, but it has been repeated so many times over the years in articles, TV shows and movies, you know, and stuff like that, especially when the era of the internet came to fruition. Now, in case you guys don't know, uh, our brain weighs about 10, uh, wow, oh my God, we'd all be freaking dead, weighs three pounds, okay, that's the weight of, a, of any average human brain, and it contains about 100 billion neurons, you know, which are the cells that carry information, you know, so, kind of like the information super how we in our brains you know so it's actually kind of impossible how to, it's it's really impossible to just use 10%. Even people who have experienced accidents, you know, who have lost a chunk of their brain or underwent surgery for to, for for any reason to remove any parts of their brain or basically suffered accidents that would impair their cognitive uh, behaviors, you know, even they use a lot more than 10%, you know? So this is a very, very stupid myth, you know, from a scientific standpoint. Now, uh, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to be exploring a little bit more for you guys how the brain works and a few other ways that you can also increase your mental health capacity, you know, and I have two different articles here, you know, very, very useful that I'm going to be reading a lot from, you know, there was a survey back in 2013, by the way, that I think is really interesting to share that said that 65% of Americans believe that people in general use 10% of their brains, you know, so that is a, that is an alarming rate, man, that is just staggering, you know. 
So a little bit more than that. It was also debunked, you know. There was uh, there was this study published called uh, Frontiers in Human Neuroscience, you know. I don't think you guys are going to want to read this, but I'm going to leave a link to it in the description. Anyway, I hope you guys check the descriptions of my videos because I always sometimes leave, uh, I always sometimes, wow, sometimes I leave useful links there, you know, and I'm going to leave a link to this as well. So I'm, I'm just going to take a quick breather here, you know, so before we continue because I'm, this is like one huge run on sentence at this point. So there's a very common brain imaging technique which is called the Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging or FMRI for short, you know, or kind of like the abbreviation rather, you know, which can measure activity in the brain as a person does different activities, you know. So because of this, researchers have been uh, able to, you know, identify along with other similar methods, you know, that most of our brain is in use most of the time that we are even awake, you know. Even when we're sleeping, our brain is still active, you know. You can't, like, your brain doesn't shut off, you know, just because because you're resting. Anything from performing a very simple action to something very complex, you are using more of your brain power than you think, you know? So don't think that I'm gonna go to sleep and shut my brain off until the next day. That's not how it works, man. Your brain is still active. Why do you think you have dreams? You know, I mean, I actually did a video some time ago discussing this. I think it was a, a little bit more philosophical talking about what if our dreams are real or something, you know, a little bit of a, of a more personal deep dive into the philosophy of it instead of science, you know, but it's another one for you to watch later if you want to, you know, this one is a little bit more scientific. That's why I'm trying to be a little bit more serious, you know, so now the percentage of the brain that is in use at any given time does of course vary you know from person to person and of course the activity that you're actually doing and there is one other thing here i'm moving on to a different article now called scientific american which i might which i might also leave a link to down in the description below you know if you guys want to read them in more detail because i'm just kind of like uh, summarizing them a bit you know now there is something here that i think is really cool you know now the thing is that uh, uh, this is like an actual real researcher and scientist talking about, you know, so here we go. A very interesting quote, you know, because the brain represents 3% of the body's weight and uses 20% of that body's energy, you know, so let, let's say the average human brain weighs about three pounds and composes it, sorry, and comprises the hefty cerebrum, you know, which is a, a kind of like the largest portion of your brain and performs, all, and performs all of the higher cognitive functions, you know, so a lot of the things that, you know, take up more brain power is performed by this cerebrum. Uh, aspect here in, in your brain so then the cerebellum which is responsible for the motor functions you know like the coordination of movement and balance and there's also the brain stem which is for more for involuntary functions like breathing things that you do without even noticing and then of course you know the majority of the energy is actually consumed by brain powers like the rapid firing of millions of the neurons communicating with each other you know so basically um Let's say, for example, there is a large portion of the energy that is used for controlling other activities, like something that is more unconscious. So, for example, the heart rate, you know, but then there's also the conscious efforts like driving a car where you actually need your cognitive functions to be working a lot, you know. So now this is where I think it gets really cool. This one here is, I think, really awesome, you know. So the simple act of pouring coffee in the morning, I love this example so much. Just walking towards the coffee pot, reaching for it, uh, pouring the brew into the mug and leaving the, the extra room for cream you know the occipital and parietal lobes and the motor sensory and sensor motor cortices and the basal ganglia and the cerebellum and frontal lobes all of these are active at the same time you know if you didn't understand all of those crazy scientific terms basically it's multiple parts of your brain activated at once for you to perform the simple act to you it seems simple just making a cup of coffee in the morning you know but that is actually taking a lot more brain power than you would perceive you know a lot of your brain is responsible for you making that simple cup of coffee in the morning you know so it goes to show you right off the bat just brewing coffee is using up a lot more than 10 percent of your brain buddy you know if you like uh because there is a lightning storm of near of uh there is a lightning storm of neuronal activity that is going through the entire brain, you know, in the span of just a few seconds, just for you to make some coffee, you know? So that's what I think is really fascinating. And there are a, a few other things that I could say here, you know, like for example, there is another mystery, the same article would go on to say, hidden within our cortices, you know, of our brain cells. And only 10% of our brain cells are neurons and the other 90% of them are, are glial cells, which incapacitate and support the neurons, you know? But their function actually remains 
remains largely unknown. We still don't know what exactly those those cells represent in our brain, what they do, you know, but I still think they're really interesting. So it's not that we use 10% of our brains, it's just that we only understand 10% of how it functions, you know? Kind of like the relationship that we have with our oceans where we know more about the surface of the moon than our own planet's oceans, you know? It's kind of like the same thing. We have yet to tap more into the potential of our own brain power. Now, in case you guys don't know, the human brain, our brains, you know, are covered in folds, which are also known as wrinkles, you know, and each one of these folds has a dip, you know, which is called the sulcus, and there's also a rise part, uh, a rise part, a raised part, which is called the gyrus, you know, and there was also this co this uh, this common popular belief that a new wrinkle was formed every time you learn something, which is also a myth, you know, and there was also this talk some years some years ago about the right and left hemisphere, like uh, how you can also be left or right brain, you know, because our brains do have two different hemispheres, you know, and people used to think that the right brain people are more creative and the left brain people are more logical. And that's also a myth, you know, because now it is true that, you know, uh, both hemispheres are responsible for different parts of our thinking and know how our brain actually functions. But we can't just rely on one hemisphere more than the other. You know, that's not how it works. And also... You know, a healthy person is constantly using both hemispheres, actually, you know, at any given moment. So uh, they have different tasks in each one, you know, like, uh, for example, uh, the, the left hemisphere of your brain is actually more involved in processing language and the right hemisphere is more for processing emotions, you know, so we are constantly using both sides of our brains, you know, so, you know, there's really nothing else to say about that. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so I don't use just 10% of my brain, but I might also not be able to use 100%, you know? But is there a way for me to use more function of my brain and keep it healthy? Yes, there are a few different things that you can do to maintain a healthy brain. Like, for example, eating a balanced diet, you know? You can also improve, you can improve your well-being, you know, and your physical health, and that will also give you more brain power, you know? So it actually, de it decreases the, the development of health risks, such as dementia, for example. So so you uh, like you can also decrease the risk of having a cardiovascular disease or uh, obesity or diabetes, anything of the sort, you know. So the more you exercise your brain and eat healthy, the better that's going to be for you in the long run, you know. And uh, certain kinds of fruits that can that foods that can help you with that are fruits and vegetables with dark skins, you know, oily fish, walnuts and pecans, you know. You can also exercise regularly. So, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do, even if it's just 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise, and that's going to dramatically improve your brain function, you know, so that's gonna help you out a lot. And other things that you can do is, for example, bike riding, jogging, swimming, you know, that kind of thing. Always keep your brain active, you know. You can, I don't know, uh, not just exercise, but maybe uh, let's see uh, what like reading books and stuff you know even watching movies or playing games can also help you you know because it's going to help you focus on training your brain speed you know and other ways to process complex information quickly I actually play a lot of video games that actually helps with hand-eye coordination you know so yes um, also uh, there there is also a few other things that I can say here you know so uh, let's see here. Oh, right. A few other tidbits of info here. Your, the brain represents around 2% of a person's weight, you know, but uses 20% of their oxygen and calories. You know, I don't know if I mentioned this before. And also, uh, way back in 1945, there was this study conducted by some scientists that actually claimed that the brain is 73% water, you know, so it's actually a lot more fragile than you might think. And also, keeping your brain hydrated is important, you know, because being dehydrated by as little as 2% can also dramatically impair your, your ability to perform from tasks that involve attention, memory, and motor skills, you know, and also cholesterol, you know, uh, there is, it, it is a type of fat that is considered uh, bad for your health, you know, too, eating too much cholesterol is bad for your heart. However, you, many people are not aware that cholesterol can actually play a significant role in your brain, you know, so without cholesterol, the cells in your brain would not survive, you know, you do need cholesterol for your brain, just don't go overboard, don't go crazy consuming too much of it because it can impair your cognitive functions later down the road, you know and lead to more lead to more problems and in case you don't know 25% of the body's cholesterol is actually contained within your brain cells so it is very important so yes now that's pretty much it guys you know I, I was pulling very heavily from the two articles here you know so uh, now the thing is that there is still a lot to learn about the brain so time so scientists are constantly learning more and filling in the gaps you know between fact and fiction but hopefully this video was interesting for you you know and if it made me sound smart well I can't take the credit I was literally reading directly from the article here I tried to memorize a few things you know but it's really tough for me when I'm tired and hungry I'm really cranky and my food is sitting right there and I'm so tired man I want to freaking watch a movie and have lunch and 
and it's hard to memorize certain things you know and also uh, I'm sorry if I spoke a little fast sometimes a person might come on a video and say that I speak too fast for them to understand and I am sorry maybe it's from all the years of watching Ryan Higa, you know, because I do draw influence from a lot of different YouTubers, but hopefully this video didn't come out too quickly. You know, you guys were still able to understand me, you know. Uh, I admit that I have a habit of speaking fast when I'm hungry or in a rush, you know, so uh, it's like th it's about it's 3.30 p.m. right now. I should have be been eating lunch already and I still have other things to do, like record more videos later. So, yes, I think that this remake may have come out even better than the first one. You know, I put in a bunch of fancy text for you guys here, you know, and debunking this myth that has been going around for so many years, you know. There was this movie that I forgot the name of, you know, but it stars Bradley Cooper. I think it's Limitless. I'm pretty sure it's Limitless where you can take a pill to completely unblock your brain to 100% you know and use a lot more of that maybe that's one of the reasons why this myth was so widespread you know people thinking that they could uh, put my tablet down over here thinking that you only use 10% of your brain you know but that is of course false and uh, I do believe that we may even reach 100% of our brain capacity at a given moment you know maybe towards 90% but one thing that I can guarantee you is that we don't use 10% of it okay you can rest assured that you're not dumb or anything but I think that's it guys you know hopefully you learned something new you know and uh, uh, look, uh, expect more videos like this in the future. My back really hurts. <laughs> uh, you guys might not see it, but I sit in a very uncomfortable position here in my chair to record. Maybe, I, maybe if I lower it a little bit, let me see if I can lower it a little bit. Let's lower. Yeah, maybe I can sit up a little bit more straight. Okay, cool. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about this. You know, if you happen to like this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also subscribe to my channel because I release videos every single day. And while you're at it, hit the notification bell too so you can know exactly what time I upload and do more videos sounding smart. I hope that the white shirt and the lighting didn't affect the, the overall thing too much. I don't know. A low rider just drove by my, my gate. Holy crap. And that's it, guys. This is, uh, did I do the outro correctly? Yes. If you happen to like the video, so like, like and subscribe, notification bell, this and that, videos every single day, and blah, 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 blah. Yes. This is Chazzy signing out for now. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Roll the outro screen with your brain.